26 seasons in the major leagues as a pitcher for the New York Yankees, Los Angeles Dodgers, California Angels, Chicago White Sox, Oakland Athletics, and Cleveland Indians. He posted a career record of 288 wins, a 3.34 ERA. His 4,708 innings pitched his 2,245 strikeouts, 46 shutouts, and 700 games started are all numbers that rank Tommy John in the top 25 of all time. I first hurt my elbow and when I was 13, going from 46 feet to 60 feet. Mm -hmm. And um, I had probably in the course of three years, four years, probably 40 steroid injections in my elbow. Mm -hmm. Because back in those days, your job was to pitch. If I had an owie in my elbow, I went into a doctor, injected, injected, to two, three, three days later, it felt good, I pitched. And I kept doing it, um, you know, and what happened is that those steroids made that ligament so brittle that there became one pitch one time that it just went boom. And that's what happened. It was this day. P people thought I overthrew or I did that. That was the first thing from, from the truth. That's, they don't know what caused the elbow problem. And when Dr. Job told me what he was going to have to do, fine. I said, let's get it done because I wanted to pitch again. Mm -hmm. And my words to Dr. Job was, if you do your job, I'll do my job. Just stop for a second. When this all happened, you pitching for the Dodgers. Yep. And what, was, I mean, what was your feeling? What was the reaction here? Yeah. Well, I threw one pitch, boom, and I had a guy on first base. I, I, just walked, I just walked a hitter, and I forget who it is, but <coughs> th I think the hitter was Clyde Mayshore was up. No, Clyde Mayshore was on first base. Hal Breeden was up big left or righty hitting first baseman that if you sink the ball he's going to hit a 6-4-3 to double play and I tried to th get over the ball and throw a sinker and right when I threw it I just felt this thing go oh and I whoa it felt like my elbow l l came apart you know and I felt I, I, I felt or heard it, it's a probably didn't hear more than you kind of feel kind of a you know, sometimes when you walk, your knee will kind of lock or kind of, oh. And I don't know if you if you hear that or if it's more of a feel, but I, golly, you know, something's wrong with my arm. And I threw one more pitch and the same thing, and oh, something's really bad. And I called time and walked off the mound, met Walt Alston, and I said, Walter, I've hurt my arm. You better get somebody else in there. Mm -hmm. And I went right on in, got my jacket, told the trainer, Bill Bueller, I said, Billy, Let's go. I said, something's wrong. And Dr. Job was at the game, and he examined me. And uh, you would like this. In that era of the Dodgers, there's no off limits. I was in the trainer's room, and the press was in there interviewing me as I had my arm in the, uh, in the ice water. And they were filming me and all this stuff, and people were, because the Dodgers had no closed areas. Uh, press could go any place in the locker room except the food room. You know, they uh, watch the guys eat or whatever, but they just made access available to, to the press, which is why the Dodgers got good press. And um, Dr. Job told me, he said, uh, come back and see me the next day, which I did. And, um, you know, back then, 1974, you have to also understand there were no MRIs or CT scans. The only thing they had were x-rays. Well, x-ray does not detect ligament damage. So they had to do a test that was kind of crude, but it was the only way they did it. They held my upper arm still, and they moved my forearm back to about this angle here. <laughs> and the doctor said, Dr. Job says, hmm, he said, that's not right. 
and he takes this one, and I'm, I'm loose jointed anyway, and he goes, yeah, but it's not as much as this one. And he said, I think you've torn the ligament. Yeah, torn the ligament, come on, that's football players do, do that in their knee, which is essentially what I did. And um, they went in when it was finally, I said, hey, look, you know, this isn't going to work, me trying to pitch again, let's get this thing over with. So I went in, had it done, and when I came out, I said, well, what are my chances? He said, eh, probably one, two chances in 100 at best. And he said, you know, the thing is, you'll be able to throw again, but throw to get batters out is some, something else. You know, I, I just don't know if you'll be able to withstand the forces that you, you have to put on your arm to get big league batters out. And the thing that, uh, the thing that I'm most proud of anything I've done in baseball is um, after that surgery and I came back in 76, I, I never missed a start in 13 years because of my elbow. And I missed starts be, because I was sick or whatever like that, but never because of my arm. And I don't think there's been anybody that's ever had it done where they've come back and they've never had one day of soreness. I mean, I never had one day of soreness in my arm other than the usual soreness after you pick. From Pete Rose. Pete Rose after you'd finished second to Steve Carlton on uh, the Cy Young, this is 1977, was quoted as saying, I know they had to graft a new arm on John, quipped Pete Rose, but did they have to give him Sandy Koufax's? <laughs> no, I, you know, it was funny. Um, Pete Rose, one of the best compliments I've ever had in baseball uh, came from Pete Rose. And when Pete retired from the game. My sister lived in Cincinnati and she sent me the big paper that they had all of Pete's fa favorite things, list of this, list of that. Three toughest pitchers you had to face in order. Jim Brewer, Tommy John, Randy Jones in order. And I said, Pete Rose ranked me second of all the pitchers he faced. He had me second. I, man, I said, I, I kind of like that. Pete couldn't hit me. For whatever reason, he, he got a base hit one time, scorched one up the middle in Dodger Stadium, and the Dodgers had this big mound that was really tilted like this on, on the side. And the ball was a line drive that hit the side of the mound, carried directly to the shortstop. I mean, if the ball just hit, hit to the shortstop, short hopped him, Russell came up, threw him out at first base. Pete turns around, and my time up, I hit a ball, and I came running th around the infield, and Pete came in. He said, if I can't get a base hit on that ball, I'll never get a base hit off of you. And he, he got a double off of me one night in Cincinnati. I, I was up by a few runs. And he's standing at second base, and he said, I'm like one for 22 off of you, one for 22. Pete Rose knew what he hit off every pitcher. I mean, that was Pete. Pete knew it, and he, for, for whatever it was, I, I knew when Pete was going to hit the ball the other way, and I knew when he was going to try and pull the ball. The Hall of Fame, what hat are you going to wear? Jamestown Jammers. <laughs> Where's that? You got to buy one first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to buy one? Uh, whichever one gets me a free one. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's. Um, if the O'Malley's uh, still own the Dodgers, it would be a toss-up between three teams, uh, Yankees, White Sox, Dodgers, mm -hmm. because I really like the O'Malley family. Peter and Walter, uh, were, they were very, very, very good people. And uh, since they sold it to Fox, I, you know, I, I really don't follow the Dodgers a lot anymore because they've gotten away from that family atmosphere. Uh, follow the a little bit because of the general manager I know, but it it would come down probably between the uh, Yankees or the White Sox. You know, those are the two teams I spent the majority of my years with. But if you put out, which is why the Yankees fans liked Billy Martin because he was them. He was a battler. You know, he he was the guy that was, you know, always the second or third guy and had to battle his way to the top and. New Yorkers like that, and I think you saw that this year at 911. When it happened, they were knocked down, and they had to battle back to the top of the heap.